Hi there, hope you're having a great day so far. Well, there's absolutely no doubt whatsoever that kids are just like sponges. They sense and feel what is going on around them. Now, at the moment, with everything that's going on, we can certainly shield them from the news um, on TV. We can make sure that the TV is not on, but there's lots of things that we can't always hide their little eyes and ears um, to other, in, other information and where they may actually have exposure to what's going on with COVID-19. Things like having conversations around the home, um, possibly something that they may see online um, and or and definitely the anxiety that they would pick up from us and um, the adults in their lives. So as a mean, uh, means of actually protecting our children, if you have chosen to not openly address the details and issues that we're encountering at the moment with COVID-19, children would no doubt be aware that there has been some change in the world um, and it is going to put, like, potentially sort of continue sort of on at the moment. So in cases like this, I guess we need to consider as, a, as parents moving through the fear and actually having that conversation with our kids. Now, wouldn't you rather, I guess, from that perspective, your kids actually hear it from yourself rather than from anybody else? Now, at least this way, um, when you do have the conversation with your kids, um, you can ensure that they have heard the, the right information and it's delivered in the tone and the manner that you, you actually want the kids to be able to understand and um, absorb the information. So the question is, you know, how do you talk to your kids when you're actually feeling those those emotions and the anxiety as well. So lucky for us, we're actually joined by our special guest, Donna Cameron. Now for the last 15 years, Donna has been working as a qualified psychologist at The Couch Therapy uh, with children, adolescents, um, adults and couples. Now, Donna has actually written a self-help book called Managing Your Stress Cup and she's even got a podcast called On the Couch with Donna Cameron and her aim is to take the fear out of mental health by providing her clients with practical workable strategies. Now we're really grateful to have you join us today. How are you? Very good, thank you. Now, just on what we are just touching on and talking about before, I was, I was talking about before. Now, the difference, um, is there any difference, sorry, between the anxiety and the emotions that we're actually feeling as adults and possibly the same anxiety and emotions that children feel? Are they the same thing at the moment? No, so this is a common kind of, I guess, misconception that a lot of parents are facing. And that is because we have never lived through this before in our whole lives. So, you know, we don't know anything about it, let alone what our kids know about it and how they're feeling. So a lot of people, when they come and talk to me, are wondering if their same fears are exactly what their kids are also feeling. And the simple answer is no. So, you know, there's a lot of adult issues, I guess, that we are kind of dealing with at the moment. And they might be things like, you know, maybe somebody's um, lost their job, uh, how the bills are going to get paid, and maybe, you know, even cancellation costs for holidays. And if I talk to our young children and I say to them, you know, what are your big concerns about this whole change of the world that's going on? Their responses might just be that they're missing their friends, their friends or they didn't get touch up on the Friday. So it's a really big difference. And that's something we have to pay a lot of attention to. Yeah, that's such an interesting point. Really, really fascinating in the sense that we, um, I guess, have to take that step back sometimes and see the world through their eyes. Um, and would, would that be, I guess, the best way to have a look at it in the sense of actually, you know, we see everything the way, from our point of view, but understanding the way they see the world's very different, maybe? Yeah, and just, just remembering, you know, we're only as old as we ever are and we stay in that real present moment of our age and our issues. So, you know, we really need to be taking a step back and remembering our ages at, you know, three, four, five, and even as a teenager, and really what our big concerns were back then. A lot of us were potentially, you know, teenagers when other issues went on in the world, and we not, might not be able to tell you the actual stresses of those issues, but we might remember what that meant for us. And it might have meant for us that we didn't get, you know, a specific present that year because there'd been a global crisis and our parents didn't have as much money as they had the year before. Yeah. So we really just have to remember that, yeah, ages are different and worries are different for every age. Oh, that is such an interesting point of view. And I, um, obviously having the conversation, having any difficult conversations with kids is something that I think a lot of parents would want to be able to um, shy away from. So um, in, your, in your perspective then, you know, if, um, if parents are wanting to have that conversation, where should they start? Um, what, what's the first step that they should actually take? 
So I think the biggest thing is we need to acknowledge that this world of technology, which we're probably all very grateful that we've got right about now, um, is there and that children, even from the age of three and four, are accessing this world of technology. So it's no longer that we can completely just shield our children and, you know, turn the TVs off and turn the YouTubes off and kind of step away and hope that they're not going to find out about this. So the biggest, biggest thing that I'm getting across to parents is talk to your children, but actually just, you know, set the questions with them. So let them so just, just simply saying to them, hey, you know, there's this coronavirus thing. What have you heard about it? And what concerns do you have? We really need to be led by them. And that works especially for our families that are experiencing a lot of fear because then they can kind of just answer the questions that their children have. And that's what I was sort of saying before. You might be really shocked at to what those questions are. All right, cool. And if, if children, I guess, on the flip side of that, are left to find out um, all the difficult stuff about COVID-19 and generally in life, um, if parents don't have those tough conversations with their kids, um, mm -hmm. you know, in general, does that sort of mean that parents um, can actually, oh, sorry, that the children can actually be exposed um, to like, additional stress and anxiety because they can actually make up in their mind um, facts about things that maybe aren't actually true? Yeah, 100%. I mean, again, look at just even us as adults, how many of us are turning off our social media at the moment just because we're seeing so much misinformation, you know. We can hear one day that we're going to go into lockdown and the next day that, you know, we can fly on a holiday over to Fiji. So if we can't sort through that information, what hope do our kids have? Yep. Well, um, well, tons to talk about. So we published your article titled Talking to Our Children About Coronavirus. Um, for someone who hasn't read the article, can you give us a brief overview of what it's about and just what inspired you to write it? So I guess my the biggest inspiration was I was seeing a lot of parents with this fear and just not knowing where to start with those conversations. And it's very simple to me with the communication that we have generally in our household for any topic that arises, you know, with children and with parenting, that we just really kind of need to keep it simple. So I found a lot of parents were kind of making, I'm not, I'm not saying that the, the coronavirus isn't a big issue, but I was finding that a lot of parents were making having that conversation a lot more of a stress than it needed to be. So I guess in writing this article, it was trying just to really give some parents some basic tips and just to pull it back into their control control of how they can talk to their kids and not increase their own anxieties and fears and not, you know, have their kids kind of start screaming and running around with anxiety and fear as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, let's get stuck into the questions. What is the best way to answer questions about the coronavirus to our children? So um, similar to what we sort of said a little bit before is we need to go to them first with what information they actually require. So sit down with them, let them know that you know that the coronavirus exists, let them validate their emotions on this by just purely saying, you know, this is scary for everybody. Let them know that you don't have all the answers because as an adult as well, you know, we, we kind of pretend to them that we know everything and we try and stay in control a lot of the times. So it's okay for us to even let our kids know that, hey, we've never actually lived through anything like this before. So it's okay to have some fear and it's okay to have some anxiety about this topic. But what information do you want to actually know about it? And having that Once, as an open question and have the, the, the child actually tell you what they want to know. Yeah, and then once they let you know those questions, then obviously we need to look at the age appropriateness, but you need to answer as honestly as you can. And the honesty is very important here, purely because again, of all of this technology that we've got, if you try and now make up some story or minimize numbers or statistics, they can jump on Google and they can find that out. Yeah. So giving that truthful information, obviously being very age appropriately, age appropriate will actually really kind of help them. And then it's just, making sure i always say to people listen to the words and answer the question so once you've answered the question then check for clarification with them is that has that answered your question and do you need to know anything more and a lot of the times now especially our younger kids might be like no that's it now what are we having for dinner so it's really kind of just again keep it simple with the information and then only expand on it if they actually want more information about that actual topic Okay, that's awesome. But then you have the conversation as a question. In your opinion, do you think that the, the parents should be having regular check-in 
with their kids after the conversation to see if they're, you know, maybe they've gone away and had a thought about it. Maybe from mm -hmm. the initial conversation, their thoughts and feelings are going to alter and change. Should parents be yep. doing a bit of regular check-ins, how you're feeling and that sort of stuff as well? Yeah, definitely. And I think also be guided by any significant kind of um, changes to their routines and their lives. So I guess the, the school thing was a huge thing. So, you know, I guess, you know, kids back then, if they were having a, that, that, that week, you know, a week off before school was ending, if some parents had chosen to keep their kids at home, then really they needed to kind of be checking in every couple of days just to sort of say, hey, you know, you are still staying at home for another couple of days. Do you have any concerns or worries about that? Or do you have any questions as to why you're still at home? We might get to the time that after these Easter holidays that our kids aren't returning to school. So yeah. that's going to be another really important moment to check on our kids again, to be saying, okay, so another change has happened to you. You're not going back to school as you normally would. Have you got any other questions about that? So I'd really, I'd probably as a rule, probably say, you know, check in with them maybe once a week and definitely then on these significant timeframes that they would usually have those big events happening for them. Yeah. And in being truthful and giving children the respect that they deserve as well, you know, things um, in some parts of the world are getting better and then other areas of the world, um, you know, the, the crisis is sort of escalating. How mindful mm -hmm. can parents be with keeping kids up to date? As you were just saying, they can still, depending on their age, still find some yep. updated information online. How... I mean, how should parents be keeping the kids up to date? Because we don't know how long we're going to be in this scenario for. So what, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. I think we really need to focus on our backyard for our kids. And I think, again, you've got to remember that their perception in their world is very internal about what's important to them and what's important to their family. And then, you know, their friend group. Um, look at our teenagers. It's, it's more so themselves, their friend group, and then maybe us. So mm -hmm. I think you know, focus on what's actually happening. If you're in Victoria or Queensland or Western Australia and the rules are different, then you explain to your children what rules your state is under. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Now, next question, how can we reduce the fears about the coronavirus? So a lot of the fear-based issues that are coming from a lot of the little kids that I'm seeing at the moment and even the teens are based on the parents and how they're reacting to it as well. So as a parent, like I said before, we have to also validate our emotions and we're allowed to be stressed and concerned about this. But it's almost a little bit as a parent as well that we kind of have to also, you know, fake it till we make it in front of our kids. So we have to show them a sense of, you know, that everything is going to be okay in their world and that we're doing everything that we can to keep them safe and protected and to keep ourselves safe and protected. So if we can reduce some of our anxiety and show them that we are doing everything that we can, then I'm finding that they kind of just fall into line. It's a lot of modelling that we really need to do in these crisis situations. And this is just showing us, you know, that we have to do that now with our kids in a situation that we've never dealt with before as well. Yeah. And with the government jurisdictions everywhere, like we really are all in, in home isolation at the moment and which is um, taking kids away from, you know, all their friends and their family, uh, especially yeah. the grandparents. So as a question... Yes. Now, what is the best advice um, for talking to children about their grandparents or older relatives mm -hmm. that they are not able yep. to see them at the moment? So this is, again, this is probably one of the biggest topics that children are going to bring into me at the moment because unfortunately on the news and the media, they're not just saying, you know, protect your grandparents or the news is older people die from corona. And if you take it as a young child and the information that they're going to hear, they're going to hear old people. And oh my gosh, you know, we all know that some of our four-year-olds will see us as a, as a 30 or a 40-year-old that, you know, we're going to drop dead. So we really need to talk to them about this and to let them know again what precautions we're putting in place. So again, validate it. Let them know that, you know, the, the, the world has kind of said that older people might get sicker if they happen to get the coronavirus. So to prevent that and so that grandparents don't get sick or Nana and Pa are okay, we just have to do a few more extra measures because those people are really important to us and we love them so much and we don't want them to get sick from coronavirus. So really try and avoid using the word, you know, old people die. Um, try and just make it that they are more likely to get sick from it and this is what we're going to do so that they can stay, you know, healthy and well. And then I guess you've got to come up with some, some options for them. So 
a lot of households, you know, these days do rely on the grandparents. And some of our kids are spending more time in the afternoons with their grandparents than they are with us because we're yep. working family. So use again this technology. If that means that someone has to get over to grandma's house, even if she's tech savvy, if she hasn't set up FaceTime or Zoom or Skype, then we need to get those devices set up and we need to still have that communication going. Because what the kids will also want to see is they'll want to see that grandma, grandpa, nana, pa, auntie, uncle, they'll want to physically see that they are healthy. Otherwise, yep. their little brains might go to something's wrong with them and they might be sick. Yeah. Look, you've given us so much helpful information and advice today. How would you just recap everything in, I guess, in a summary um, for, for a parent watching? I guess, look, we, we know it's here. We know the, the coronavirus, you know, COVID-19, we're all living it. We're all stressing through it. Our kids are part of that. So find ways that you can reduce your own stress and have your own time to acknowledge what you're going through as well. But then remember, it's also time to take those moments to check in on your kids. Do it even if you need to. They come to you. Have those conversations with them whenever they come to you. If they don't come up to you, like I said before, maybe just check in with them weekly or if an important event's coming up, just to listen to what their questions are, listen to the words, answer the words, and just be as honest as you can. Yeah. Thank you so much for your helpful advice today. Um, if parents have got any other questions and they want to get in touch with you, whereabouts can they find you? So they can send us an email. Um, my, my email is Donna at the couch.biz. Um, and yeah, we're basically working throughout the clock just to help as many people as we can to get through this as well. And we'll have all the links to your website and, and to the article as well. But so grateful for your time and really hope to have a, like the opportunity for another chat in the not too distant future again. Thanks, Donna. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye.